Hello and welcome to the video Spring MVC Response Body Explained. In this video, I'd love to help you understand the meaning, purpose, uses of the response body annotation in Java web application development with the Spring framework. I am Nam Haming at Code Java.net. So, what is the response body annotation in Spring MVC? You know, the response body annotation indicates a method return value should be bound to the web response body. And depending on the content type accepted by the client, an appropriate HTTP message converter will serialize the Java object returned by the handler method into the content type requested, such as JSON or XML. And you can apply this annotation at the method or class level. And this annotation is commonly used in REST API development to convert Java objects into JSON documents sent in the web response body. And let me explain how the response body annotation works. Suppose that the client sends a request like this with the URI like this. The request method is get and the accepted content type is application slash JSON. This request is handled by this handler method in the Spring MVC controller class. Get method, you see this handler method is annotated with the response body annotation and it returns an object of type student. The student class is written like this, it has two fields ID and name. So this handler method will return a student object with the field ID and name populated with the actual values in the uh, database, for example. And because the accepted content type of the client is JSON, so the mapping section to HTTP message converter is able to serialize this uh, student object into a JSON document that is sent in the response body. The JSON document represents a student object like this. You see it has two fields, ID and name, with the corresponding values ID1 and name, Peter Smith. So this makes sense, right? And let me show you the uses of the response body annotation in a real-world project. Here in this IDE, you see I have a Java Spring Boot project and this year REST controller class, student API controller, and this year handler method for the REST student API. You see it returns a student object filed by the given ID. The ID is read, is read from the path parameter as the path variable name ID. And you see this handler method is annotated with the response body annotation. And uh, this is the code of the student class. You see it has two fields, ID and net. Okay, now let me start this application to test this get student API using a curve in terminal. So I open a, a new terminal window here and I use, use the curl command here localhost htht api slash students and id id1 and you see it returns a JSON document that represents the student uh, information about the student id1 it has two fields id and name So that's a very simple example of using the response annotation in the Spring MVC web application in the REST API development. Okay, and uh, let me show you another example. The response body annotation is also used in, uh, in an exception handler class like this. So, it indicates that the Java object, such as error detail here, should be bound uh, to the 
Web Response Body has a JSON document. Error detail is a simple Java class, as you can see here. Also, this method is annotated with the response body annotation. And you can see this uh, annotation doesn't have any attributes. It can be applied at both class level or type level here or method level here. Okay, you see. And uh, you know, the REST controller annotation you used for REST controller class here, it does use the response annot annotation here, you see. In the code of the REST controller annotation, it includes the response body annotation in its declaration. That means in a REST controller class like this, you don't have to uh, specify the response body annotation explicitly and it is included uh, by the REST controller annotation here, yeah, response body. So here yeah, I can delete the response body annotation here yeah, and it still works. Okay, let me test again. Still the 98. You see, it works, returns the JSON document that represents the information about still the 98. So, keep in mind that the REST controller annotation uses the response annotation already. So, uh, you uh, may need to use this annotation in classes other than the REST controller class, uh, such as this one. In this global exception handler class, you need to, we need to use the response annotation here. So the return object here will be uh, serialized uh, to a JSON document that is sent in the response body. Okay, so that's how the response body annotation works. Let me stop the application. To summary, using the response body annotation is a convenient way to have Java objects returned by handler methods serialized into the content type accepted by the client such as JSON or XML. And this uh, response body annotation saves developers a lot of time. Imagine if you had to manually write code to convert Java objects to JSON or XML representation, right? And this annotation doesn't have any attributes as you have seen using this annotation is quite simple. And when applied at the class level, this annotation is inherited by all the methods in the class. That means you don't have to apply it to each individual method. And the response body annotation is included by the REST controller annotation. That means you don't need to use this annotation in REST controllers. And you may need to use this annotation explicitly in classes other than controllers, other than REST controllers. So that's uh, my video about Spring MVC response body annotation. I hope you found this video helpful. Please subscribe to my channel, like, comment, and share this video. Thanks for watching.